Well, I did cosmic art and I gave long interviews and because people were trying to understand what it meant to do cosmic art. And to me, I, oh, I didn't only want to do aesthetical art. I mean, of course I love decoration and I love beautiful colors and I love design and, 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 and that's even a passion. But I also wanted to uh, deliver a message. This was just part of the way I function, you know. I, I always thought art could be a costume for expressing different thoughts, more like a piece of theater or a writer, and, and I would try to almost tell stories with my art. So then, uh, well, as I went along, uh, after Egalier and the Egalier period, I was exposed by uh, by an uh, artist uh, from the United States. His name is Jim Cortland. He had the uh, European Société des Arts in Marina Bay des Anges. And uh, there as well I met wonderful people. I met uh, a certain Mr. Loverison, who uh, then looked at my sculptures who were running with neon, the first two that I had built, and he said to me, well listen, why don't you uh, consider using solar? And I had actually already considered it before that, but when he said it to me, you know, he was such a, a kind and inspiring personality, I was thinking, well, you know, uh, this would be a good thing to do, and then uh, I uh, went to my mailbox a month later and I had a package in the mail, and when I opened it, it was filled up with uh, phot photovoltaic uh, panels and uh, cables, special cables that I could link to this and uh, and uh, and create uh, my first solar artwork. And I created then with uh, Bernard Giton in Touraine, a French technological artist of uh, of, of the best kind. Uh, we created together the the solar head, and it was a uh, sculpture that. Uh, it was, it was a sculpture that worked with diodes, which was very new then, at the time, imagine uh, 15 years ago. I remember each diode cost a fortune, you know, I really had to count my money to see if I could afford to put seven of these diodes on the head uh, to be able to build this uh, sculpture. And, uh, and we put these photovoltaic uh, panels and then the sculpture would actually charge itself with the sunlight and it was timed so that it would blink all night and charge all day, like a cycle. Finally, and this is what I discovered in my work, that, uh, that I learned so much from nature and observing nature, I, I do not think that uh, mass production, ever cheaper mass production, uh, can lead to good results because you're consuming ever more petrol, uh, we're taking away food and energy from third world countries, and, uh, and uh, we have huge industries uh, who are producing uh, cycles that deal with violence in the middle of it somewhere so that they can function. I don't think that has something to do with freedom nor with a positive constructive future for our children. I think what we have to learn is how to use Mother Nature in the way she has been designed by the universe. We live in a galaxy we we must learn how to deal with these cycles and not just saying, well, here is the normal trend of things, this is the way things are done in the world. Well, no, things are not done this way in the world because you, we as humanity as a whole are playing chess with Mother Nature. And Mother Nature is infinitely more strong than anything we represent. Um, Therefore, I think uh, we have a lot to learn and, and we have an exciting future in front of us, learning how to transform and uh, learning how the system really functions. So there has to be a transformation toward a coher coherent, perpetual cycle that governs space and the Milky Way, in which we live as a tiny little dot. And, uh, and to me, that's the only way we're going to, to work out this problem. I'm confident. And that's transnature art. Thank you.